Yo, what's up? Welcome to another build guide. So this is gonna be a guide for the character Pathfinder uh, using Mind Over Matter, Agnostic, Clock of Defiance, Indigo and all the broken stuff. So normally I avoid these kind of builds. I actually haven't played a an Agnostic build for maybe over a year because if you are an older player, you know that Agnostic actually um, got into the game in Legion League. With the timeless jewel later, they added it to the passive tree. I was like, yeah, it is probably nerfed now, and bam, it is still the same. Nothing has changed. Uh, these kind of builds are very popular these days, even more popular than before. That's why that is another reason for me to dodge, you know, making this kind of build. But the league is dead, uh, no one's playing. People ask me for an uh, Pathfinder Mind Over Matter build, so it is time to try that uh, before maybe it is gonna get nerfed or something like that in 3.15. Uh, I am using Bane and Blight because, again, um, I don't want to do the stuff that everyone does. So, this was actually a little popular build, maybe one or two leagues ago. But these days, most people try different skills. So, I wa just wanted to show some love to do Chaos skills. That's why I am using those. So, if you are not familiar with how this kind of build works, let's just first explain that. I will then roll some clips and after that, I will explain all the equipment and the rest of the stuff as usual. First of all, we are playing a Pathfinder. Let's just check a couple of her passives. Nature's Boon. Flask gain 3 charges every 3 seconds. That is probably the most important stuff. That means that you have actually passive flask charge regeneration, which also works in boss fights. But uh, if you just spam your flasks, you can actually run out of your flasks in a boss fight. So be careful. Uh, maybe dodge the boss's attacks for a couple of seconds and wait for your flasks, uh, you know, to be ready. And then you can just start the pacing again. So you have to figure that out depending on what kind of boss you are fighting. But in a map, uh, in maps, you will, you know, it is impossible to um, run out of flasks. Combining this with lots of uh, passive flask uh, charge gain from other sources. Also, you are killing monsters. So in maps, you won't have any issues. Master Alchemists, uh, immune to elemental ailments during any flask effect, which means freeze, ignite and shock, which is very important uh, to be tanky. Other stuff, nature's uh, reprisal, I, some, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, cast skills have 30% increased area of effect, that is the only thing that works for this build, that is only for some extra clear speed actually. And I actually spent the final points to flask effect and duration, small points actually, to just get some increased effect. You can maybe get Nature's Adrenaline for some movement speed, but you don't actually need movement speed because the build is super fast, because it is a Pathfinder. Uh, so, how is this build? Thank you. If you are not familiar with the mechanics, that's why I am going to explain this right now, so you will have better understanding before watching the clips. Uh, if you already know how this build works, uh, just go and watch the boss clips or the rest of the video if you want. So, first of all, this build is a dodge build. We don't have any block or armor, those kind of stuff. We have capped dodge, 75% attack dodge, I believe also 75% spell dodge, uh, we will check that later in the pet of building. Uh, because we have quartz flask, acrobatics, phase acrobatics on the talent tree and also flask effects, that's why quartz flask actually provides more um, dodge than it should be, you know, it should provide. And also we are using unique boots, omeo can or whatever. 2% uh, chance to dodge attack and spell it per 500 max mana up to 20%. So we have more than 6k mana, that means that uh, these boots only requires 5k mana to be at maximum dodge, but we have more than 5, we have 6k, more than 6k actually. That's why yes, uh, these boots provide also 20% dodge to attack and spells, that's why you can easily cap your dodge. Uh, so what else? Mind over matter, we are using Cloak of Defiance body armor, this already provides mind over matter keystone, so you don't have to get that on the talent tree. 30% of damage is taken from mana before life. So you won't get hit by life all the time, you will actually get some of the damage taken uh, from mana. That's why you need a good mana pool, also mana regenerate, those kind of stuff. Cloak of Divines also provides additional 10% damage is taken from mana uh, before life. That is a total of 40%. I'm not actually using any Watcher's Eye or stuff like that, I just avoided expensive Watcher's Eyes. So maybe you can also get a Clarity Watcher's Eye, but we are not using Clarity normally. So you have to maybe use a level 1 Clarity, so you don't reserve much mana. Maybe you can do that and get additional uh, Mind Over Matter effect from a Watcher's Eye if you want. Uh, so you are gonna be even tankier. So because of this, if you have maybe some low mana, maybe you just spammed your skills, which I'm gonna explain right now. You can actually die, you know, get one-shotted if you are not careful. 
because if you don't have much mana left at that point and maybe try to tank a guaranteed one shot ability you can actually get one shotted uh, yeah that's why you have to be very careful at bosses do not try to face tank everything yes the build can easily tank shaper beam serious die beam all of them at the same time you know all the five hits four or five hits i'm not sure maybe i think he has five hits total you can actually tank those kind of stuff easily but if you are at low mana at that exact second and get it by something like maybe a shaper slam uber elder slam you know you know those kind of attacks if you are familiar with the bosses you can actually get one shot out easily so you have to be very careful in those boss fights so how are we getting any damage because these are all uh, defensive you know so finally indigo and helmet these are the core stuff that's why i am explaining these before the clips so you will have good understanding of the mechanics indigo and helmet let's just read the bottom two sentences because they are the most important for the dps increased cost of skills for each 200 total mana spent recently uh, recently means the last four seconds uh, spell damage for each 200 total mana you have spent recently again same stuff up to 2000 uh, percent so this means that if you just stop and start cast your spells so normally i am using bane for map clear and staking my mana cost uh, that is a very good skill to clear maps easy to play just you know brainless skill just press the button it will just um, cover whole screen very easy requires no skill at all for bosses i'm using yeah blight that is probably the best uh, spell i believe for chaos over time uh, it is also very popular and it is used uh, with essence drain builds those kind of stuff because it has so much a uh, good single target dps uh, so you just want to spam your bane we are also using sigil of power which is a something like buff that lasts on the ground you will just see it is a blue big circle so you just uh, stand in it start casting your bane so you will have increased mana cost in your sigil and because of indigo and helmet you will just notice that you will spend uh, a lot of mana after a couple of seconds also we are using arcane cloak which is both a buff a guard skill and also it um, consumes a lot of mana that indigo will actually start working um, as soon as possible if you just press your arcane cloak so press your arcane cloak in your sigil of power start spamming uh, bane a couple of seconds you will just notice that your bane will actually require more than 3k 4k mana after maybe like two or three seconds you cannot actually <laughs> cast after some point uh, because we have only like 6k mana and the skill will require something like 4k so you cannot just spam it you just wait for your mana to regen with mana flask mana regen those kind of stuff after that it means that you are ready you have to rush for the boss as soon as possible or maybe you are at the boss's feet already so just um click on your blight and wait for it that's it uh, if you just uh, lose your stacks, if you cannot kill the boss in 4 seconds maybe, uh, just rinse and repeat, sigil of power if it is not up, bane, just spam bane, arcane kulak uh, first of all obviously, and again blight, uh, if you run out of um, flask charges in a boss, just run, wait for your flask because we are actually pathfinder which I already showed you, so you will just generate those flask charges without even doing anything, just maybe survive 10 seconds, dodge the boss, and then if you are ready bam same stuff sigil arcane kulak bam 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 bane and blight that's it that's how the build works uh, you will also watch those in the clips i will just i won't cut all the clips so you can see how i prepare for a boss so let's just first watch the bosses first then i will explain the rest of the gear maybe some talent tree you know the cluster jewels i will show those and the usual stuff
no, 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 no. <laughs> Alright, now I will explain the rest of the gear so you will know what to buy, what to craft or whatever it is needed. First of all, uh, this build is played with a bow because we need separate two six links and a multi-crafted bow is a very good way to get some damage. This is actually a low budget bow but it is not very cheap because this is overall a, uh, an expensive build. This cannot be a leak starter, this kind of mind over matter agnostic builds are actually uh, very expensive. So the total cost I spent with the current leak price because the leak is dead, no one's playing. I spent something like 60 exalt, maybe 65 exalt. But uh, you can actually make this build for cheaper at a maybe something like three weeks in a new league, maybe one month. So in a fresh league, let's say, you can actually do this build for cheaper because some of the pieces are actually more expensive right now because uh, the market is just dead. No one's playing. Uh, you can actually have a better ball, but let's just uh, check this one first. So you just want some uh, gem level. So you will have a higher level Bane, which is good for mana cost and also DPS. And some damage over time, those kind of stuff. My bow also has aspect of spider, which I am not using because this is a very popular bow. Uh, people use this for essence drain builds. You do not need that aspect of spider. So you just search for plus one socketed gems, damage over time multiplier. Uh, can have up to three craft modifiers, which means multi craft. Uh, plus two socketed support gems, which is good for all of our support gems. Plus we are using M power, so it is actually also plus two level to our bane uh, automatically and cast damage over time multiplier because this is a dot build damage over time that's why we want damage over time cast damage over time uh, that is the two multipliers that works for this build if you have a good budget you can actually craft your own bows uh, with the four socket resonators if i remember the uh, fossil combination i will write those on the screen but you can easily find that if you just google it how to craft uh, gem plus gem whatever uh, bow something like that you can easily find the post in a forum or something like that but if i can find it i will just write it uh, but that is a way more expensive bow you can actually get something with maybe like plus five gems total so, uh, plus strength gems intelligence gems so that's actually a way better bow but way more expensive and none of them exist right now in the market because the league is dead that's why I avoid uh, crafting something like that. You don't actually need that. You can just play the build like this. You know, if you know me, you know that I actually avoid some very expensive pieces if I can while making a build. You can actually easily spend more than 100 exalt for this build, but I just made it with like 60 exalt. Uh, yeah, quiver, very cheap. You don't need anything uh, other than resists and life. People normally do not even pick these up. So that's why this is very cheap. Just life and a lot of resistances. That's the only things that you need. Also make sure that it has an open prefix. So you can also craft mana. That's it. The base type. Uh, the other stats. They are not important. Just get life resist and mana. Indigo and helmet. Uh, it, this is a drop from Uber Elder. So at a leak start you have to wait. At least maybe like one week to get this cheaper. Maybe two weeks. But again this is an expensive build. So make sure you farm some currency. If you want to do this in 3.15. Um... I already explained this at the start. I will just explain the enchant maybe. I got something with effect of curses applied by Bane. Uh, Bane is actually a skill that also casts any curses that it is attached. We also have despair in our Bane six link setup. That's why we can easily also automatically let's say apply uh, despair which is a chaos. It, it is a good um, curse for chaos builds let's say. Uh, that's why I picked this enchant. You can also get maybe blight damage. Or anything with Bane for maybe more uh, better map clear. Maybe something with Arcane Kulak. Just check those if you like those. If they are cheaper, maybe try different enchants. This was very cheap. Something like 20 chaos maybe. That's why I picked this. Because you don't need anything else to just enjoy the build, you know. But the armor, uh, I just explained this at start. Clock of Divine's core item. Mind over matter, mana. Damage taken from uh, mana before life. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, there is nothing else to explain. Uh, from harvest you can also enchant this with uh, mana per quality so you can have a better mana pool Close very cheap. I actually avoided uh, buying something expensive cast damage over time multiplier on a hunter base That is good for DPS 
mana resist life very cheap very easy to find if you have the budget you can use awakener orbs with a chaos damage over time multiplier uh, plus damage over time multiplier or spell damage because that works for blight actually so you can maybe get some double influenced clothes if you have the budget boots again already explained omeo can dodge attack dodge spell um, lots of mana but we are actually losing mana so this boots has a downside but we have a lot of mana regeneration so that is not an issue actually you can easily sustain it with a permanent mana flask because we are pathfinder uh, if you bother doing labyrinth or maybe you just bought it from someone else your best enchant is mana regeneration rate if you have cast a spell recently that is very good very important uh, make sure you get that in the end amulet at zero is foible lot of mana uh, mana regeneration also items and gems have reduced attribute requirement so this means that if something requires maybe 100 dexterity it is actually lower so you don't actually need 100 dexterity for an item or maybe for a gem you know so you can actually um, play with less attributes easily and equip gems items for enchant arcane capacitor i just used that it is on the screen uh, if you know something better if you want to you know just something else if you want just go for that but this is something that I've, i found useful that's why i use this ring this is a new base type that added in 3.14 if you want to craft or buy something uh, on this uh, go for that cast damage is good for dps obviously if you want more life use cerulean rings uh, maybe i'll just put a picture on the screen also that is good for mana uh, that is that cannot actually be way better because it will be tankier other stats on ring life obviously mana again obviously because we need both of them to survive and resistances uh, you can also use maybe essence i will put the uh, picture on the screen if you want to craft uh, for some additional damage uh, for cast damage actually so if you just uh, craft it on this new base type uh, you can actually get double chaos damage because this already has chaos damage on the implicit and from essence you can put another one uh, so that can also be good you can go for that other ring essence form very easy to find uh, very cheap uh, plus two level of socketed aura gems this is where you put your aura this is our only buff uh, malevolence socket gems have no reservation so this is basically a free aura so you can easily play with 6k mana more than 6k or um, however your gear is maybe you will have more mana uh, so you don't need to reserve anything at all finally a belt so this is a little expensive uh, less than 10 exalt but because it is a stygian wise plus redeemer that's why it is a little expensive mana mana recovery rate maybe flask mana recovery rate also but the most important stats are max mana and mana recovery rate in my opinion so try to get at least two different mana stats my belt actually doesn't have any resist or other stuff so this was actually very cheap i bought this for three exalt i believe maybe i found it cheap i don't know uh Stygian Vices are expensive by the way, you can maybe get different base if you have a lower budget because a Redeemer Stygian Vice is what makes this belt actually expensive but uh, you in the end need mana and mana recovery rate on a Redeemer base that, that is pretty much it if you have a Stygian Vice also get a jewel in it, Abyss Jewel with again life, mana, if you need resistances maybe go for that maybe if you need strength or whatever just Try to get life and mana from everywhere uh, so you can be tankier. Because you need to be tank. That is the whole point of this build. You will just kill bosses eventually, you know. You don't need crazy DPS. Just make sure that you survive. That's why you need a lot of uh, mana mana pool. Uh, let's take a look at the pet of building real quick. So I will just show you a couple of jewels and also explain the cluster jewels. So I am using two different large clusters. Some mediums and small jewels. So the idea about these jewels are uh, to get some chaos damage. If you know anything better for large jewels actually, you can also go for that. For mediums and smalls, our main stat uh, notable is liquid inspiration. Max mana, mana recovery from flasks. Power charge doesn't matter for this build. We will have power charges all the time, but this is a dot build. This is not a crit build. So these are for only mana and mana recovery. So make sure you get small clusters with these 
I only got two passives, so I don't uh, spend more points. Because I am already level 96. If you get three points, even if you are level 100, you will, you cannot actually. Maybe let's just check. One, two, three. Actually, if you are level 100, uh, you can get three points if you want. Maybe if you have some crazy jewels, liquid inspiration plus mana, maybe something like that as suffixes. Oh no, that is prefix actually. Mana is a prefix. So maybe you can get these kind of little bonuses, you know, evasion, dex, whatever. So a 3 stat can actually be good if you have a higher level or... Uh, but you can actually get more mana from talent tree. I actually haven't gotten this, which provides a lot of mana. So you will actually have more stuff, you know, this 8 mana. Here, 10% mana. So probably 2 clusters are uh, better. So you can... Um, just focus on other stuff on the talent tree, even if you are higher level. So for large, chaos, base type, uh, base jewel, let's say. Eight passives obviously do not get anything more than that. So because if you get something like that, you have to actually spend more points. Uh, we don't want that. Eight points uh, is the thing that you need to buy uh, in a large jewel. So you can actually get other stuff. Uh, just check the PoE database website. Just get anything with chaos damage. Chaos speed is nice. Skill effect duration, wicked pal, this is good. Because blight is something that you stack, actually, you have to stack a lot of layers of damages. So you will just notice the damage after a couple of seconds, maybe. That's why skill effect duration also works. So wicked pal is very good. Chaos speed is very important. Uh, so you can actually stack blight easier. Unholy grace. Touch of cruelty. Enemies hindered by you take 10% increased cast damage. That is the only thing that matters. Blight already hinders. So this is very good. But my other large jewel is actually different, I believe. Let's check. Again, Wicked Pal, Unholy Grace. I believe these two are very powerful. And Dark Ideation. Cast damage per 100 mana up to 80%. So you want... Let's just check. Yeah. 4k mana, right? We have already more than 6k. So this works fully. 80% increased cast damage. This is also very good. So just get different combinations depending on your budget, but I highly recommend getting Unholy Grace because cast speed is very important in my opinion. For mediums, you want at least one of these. Just actually only one, not at least. Spike Concoction, uh, Attack Cast Speed and also Alchemist Genius when you use a flask. I will just put the screen, uh, put the picture on the screen <laughs> uh, so you will know what this is. This is something to do with flask effect and charge gain, I believe. Just read it on the screen, alright? You want one of this only. Because this is an expensive medium jewel. As you can see, I only got something with one notable, which is Spike Concoction. This was cheaper. I don't even use this. If you have the budget, try to get something uh, beside this. Uh, with this or whatever, maybe I chose a wrong word. Uh, yeah. Uh, Spike Concoction plus something. Again, check PoE database. Try to get something with maybe mana recovery from flasks. Damage over time maybe because let's just check it, uh, take a look at this. Uh, breathe for potency. These are actually the same base. Flask bases. But you don't need obviously more than one spike concoction. So you can get also something with breathe for potency. Damage over time. Flask charge gain. Mana recovery from flasks. Life and mana. Uh, again liquid inspiration. This is very important. But if you try to get something with Liquid Inspiration plus Spike Concoction that is very expensive as far as I know. I haven't even checked. Uh, if you can afford it, just go for that so you can have a better jewel in this slot. But other slots are again Liquid Inspiration and Breathe for Potency. This was the cheapest. There is actually something else with Flasks. Um, just check PoE database. Alright, that is your website to check everything. Just check Medium Clusters, Flask uh, Base Type. <clears throat> just uh, put them in the uh, path of building if you think that is better uh, just go for that but mainly you want some liquid inspirations uh, for other jewels life mana cast damage over time this was actually cheap compared to an end game build uh, only one exalt i forgot to delete the price tag you can also get uh, spell damage but try to get life and mana combined so you will be tankier we also got this spell damage max life max mana also, it cannot be hindered, which is very good for ultimatums. That's why I paid one exalt for this. This is actually way cheaper. And in a fresh league, these will be very cheap. Because the league is right now dead. That's why I actually paid extra for some equipment. And again, one more clear mind. Because we don't have any mana reserved. Thanks to using an Essence Worm ring. 
That's why we will have no mana reserved, a lot of spell damage and also mana regeneration rate. You can only equip one of these because this is limited to one. Finally, uh, one of the most expensive pieces that we use, Unnatural Instinct, a grants all bonuses of unallocated smalls. So we want to get this by using the life regenerate node because we don't need these because th these are gonna get deleted because this also says allocated small passives in radius grant nothing these are small passives these are all small passives all right these are all small passives that's why you don't want to allocate the good ones we just get regenerate because we don't actually need this these are gonna get negated but we are gonna get everything else skill effect durations cast speed area of effect and lots of mana so this is a good place to put this also uh, what else we don't need this yeah we don't need this uh, lots of mana regen mana area of effect which is good for bane cast speed skill effect duration that's pretty much it this is a good place to put this obviously you don't need this to start playing the build this is something that you should buy later on but you can see that this provides decent mana and also skill effect duration is very important uh, for bane uh, damage uh, not bane a uh, blight so this is actually good for uh, boss DPS also. And I tried to get this eventually, but this is a, an expensive <coughs> um, item. Uh, that's pretty much it. I believe there is nothing else to explain. Maybe Pantheons. Uh, the build is not stun immune, but I have a stun avoidance on my Quartz Flask, I believe. Yeah, this one. This is an. This is a craft from Katarina. You have to kill it, uh, kill her, and unveil a cinder solo flask if you do not have this get this from someone else maybe a friend or just join my discord uh, there are more than thousand people here uh, someone eventually will craft you this if you want or just buy it from a crafter but you have to pay obviously some chaos uh, this is good for some stun avoidance but again we are not fully stun immune so that's why maybe you can use brian king but other stuff are also very good lunaris is one of my favorites but we are actually kept at dodge so maybe this is also useless for this build so you can also go for solaris so just yeah, use whatever you want actually and for miners aberat is one of my favorites again unaffected by burn ground i like this a lot if you are farming also harbingers those kind of stuff but you will actually do not um notice that degeneration while playing this build a lot because this build has so much regeneration but again uh, this is good or I'm not really sure these are not very good in my opinion maybe I am missing anything um, this is actually also not bad because we are kept at dodge we don't get hit a lot that's why we will have additional normal speed this is good for mapping and also for if you take in a savage hit which is pretty much all the time I believe uh, if you get hit by something um, but I'm not really sure 5% chance to evade this can also be good so just use whatever you want in the end that doesn't matter that much uh, for pantins uh, thanks for watching, do not forget to like and subscribe, don't forget to join my discord, that's where I chat with people and answer questions. So 3.15 is coming soon, uh, something like one month maybe, because they postponed it uh, one week. I will prepare lots of League Starter full guides. I right now have five guides ready, but I need to shoot the videos obviously, but the clips and pedal of buildings are all ready. I am not still um, explaining what I am doing. They are just, you know, <laughs> my own projects, that's why. Well, most of them, you already know those builds probably, but uh, I'm not telling them right now, alright? Uh, you can give me build ideas, maybe I'll just consider them, so that's why um, try to join Discord. Just mute the channel because we are talking a lot. Uh, just check from time to time, so maybe you will... Uh, don't get behind, alright? Don't get behind the news, uh, if, I am, if I can explain myself clearly. So don't miss any news, alright? That's why. Thanks for watching and I will see you later.